Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access where I'm going to test things out by landing a base on Duna. Uh, this is the base here. We're not going to put it in a fairing because we got to see how that works out for us. And it consists of the large hydrogen tank, the spherical one, uh, some of the nerves, four of them. And uh, there is a command module in here, that's the Mark II lander can. And then these uh, Wanderer Mark III lander cans. And we've got four of them attached to it. And we've got one strut to e between each of them and the Mark II lander can. And then also struts between each of them and the sphere. And then we've got some antennas and, of course, the nuclear reactor on top, because why not? Uh, so we'll see how unstable this whole thing is. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be maybe unstable, but maybe it won't be. Let's find out. Uh, it is actually docked to this stage down here because we want to be able to use this stage for other things. It's probably got way too much Delta V just for slinging that over to Duna. And so we'll probably, we might actually uh, turn it into a station later on. Uh, because we might turn it into a station, I decided to put some solar panels on. We've got the controller down here and a reaction wheel and some batteries down here and of course the big swerve engine. And otherwise this is the same rocket that I used in the previous video where I tried to accelerate a, a Kerbal to the moon as quickly as possible. So we know that we have to root to the bottom of it for it to be stable, and so I'm going to do that now. So now it is rooted to the bottom. Maybe that'll still be good, or maybe this is going too far as far as stability is concerned. We are at the Duna window, and if this works out and we land this over at Duna, we will continue to build up our Duna base and see whether it's going to be more stable in this version than my previous moon base was a few versions ago. I had built a moon base, though... It had a tendency whenever I sent a new module to it for things to explode or clip into the ground and such, but maybe things are a little bit different this time. So alright, let us launch. Delta V is not an issue. Uh, we don't have any parachutes on the sphere, but it is underfueled. There's a spheratron, and it's only got 10 tons. That'll be enough for the landing on Duna, I think. Alright, so with all that, well that pretty much looks like how much we need to get to orbit, that's good. Uh, here we go. Uh-oh. It had the struts! I controlled from the bottom. Well, let's, let's see, let's see. I'll ignite the nuclear engine right away. The swerve. It's possible having thrust on the core will help stabilize things. No guarantee, though. And we have way too much Delta V anyway. I mean, but the boosters are sort of shaking here already. <laughs> uh, Alright. Let's see. Oh, why, why, why is it different now? The struts are attached. Same struts as we had before. Hmm. Uh, the boosters are clearly wiggling out, and it's after we launch. Well, let me try a different launch pad. <laughs> just, let me just recover what's at launch pad 1 and try launch pad 1 instead. We could also try the runway, but I mean, it's after we launch though. Uh, we've got this, uh, okay, and we've got this residual control here. We've got 0.5 meters per second going somewhere. Hmm. And that's actually preventing us from time warping with the regular time warp instead of the fizz warp. It's probe core. So we've got this suspicious 0.5 meters per second, but we'll try it anyway. But I'm expecting the same result. Well, let's let's stroll down. Okay, not that much. I think pad one is better. <laughs> okay, but we're we're getting wobbly. We're getting wobbly. I mean, this is not a surprise. I mean, it probably should get wobbly. I'm 
mean, this, we've got a big sphere at the top, for heaven's sakes. I am not blaming the game for this. This it should be wobbly. This should be a wobbly rocket. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe we're through the worst of it though. I mean, not only have we got the spherical base at the top, we've also got it on docking ports. I will deorbit the boosters this time. That's probably good enough for them. Okay. Well, we'll wait until Apoapsis, but this is what we are right now. We've got a nuclear reactor on top. We don't have to extend the solar panels, but hey, why not? Uh, then again, we're still probably in the atmosphere. I should have put RCS ports on this. I forgot about that. We'll probably need a tug to bring it into any sort of uh, station. Or maybe we'll just build a station around it. I did not put any landing legs on our base. I didn't feel like we needed it, but we'll find out. Will the suspension on the landing legs help? Will we have to turn off the suspension? Um, lots of questions. We also need to make sure that the Spheratron is not feeding into our engine here. It is, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, we need to cancel crossfeed on the docking ports. Okay, we are in orbit, and now let's try and go to Duna. So Duna's like this right now, and uh, come to think of it, with this rocket I should at some point do a uh, quickest to Duna thing. So I did set a record to the moon, I mean in theory. If somebody knows that there's a better record, please tell me. We'll try to beat it. <laughs> so. I think it was uh, 1 hour and 54 minutes in game time. Oh, there's the moon? Wait a second. We're getting trolled by the moon and Minmus? Well, that explains a lot. Okay, I can't plot a good path because both the moon and Minmus are interfering. If we try and go any further. So we'll just have to correct it later. It is not going to be optimal or anything, but... What can I do if both if both the moon and Minmus are going to troll us? What what chance do I have really? Look at that, crazy. Okay, well we should just probably go. And I don't trust this timer. We should probably start now. But yeah, they can do a lot with 10,000 meters per second of Delta V. I am not worried. Uh, uh, it's not showing me an encounter with Duna. We, we should probably be encountering Duna because, like, we're crossing its orbit somewhere. Or at least not a direct encounter, but, you know, a closest approach, but... Uh, it's probably confused because we've got two different SOI changes here and it really doesn't like, you know, figuring things out beyond this much. I forget how many patch conic levels we have it set to. I want all the patch conic levels. Well, it only goes to five. In case we one had seven. <laughs> I always had it set to seven, so it's not giving me enough patches to see whether we're going to be encountering Duna or not. Oh well, we'll just have to pass by the Moon and Minmus then, and then sort it all out. Alright, on we go. Technically it's Valentina and Tim C here. I don't even know whether they can get out of the Mark II lander can because the other, the Mark III lander cans are actually potentially blocking the way. The, the, I left the door space open. There might not be enough of a gap for the Kerbals to, like, squeeze through. And it's the window side of these lander cans facing outward, so the door side of these Mark III ones are facing the Mark II lander can. 
Oh well, uh, we can maybe plot something now. Okay, well we have an entering SOI thing there. Okay, go. And it's not showing my <laughs> me my Duna encounter again. All right, let's just pass by the moon. Okay, passing by the moon. All right, the moon and Kerbin behind us here. And we'll just exit the SOI before trying to figure things out. Okay, well, we're pretty close, but not close enough. So I'll just plot a little correction here. All right, well, that should get us into the SOI. Though it's not making that super clear. I probably shouldn't have all that mod propellant, but whatever. We'll pretend they're supplies, or it's supplies. Always felt that Kerbals would drink mod propellant. Mod propellant is like Kerbal protein shakes. Okay, well it says periapsis 19,000 kilometers. Doesn't really show- oh, it does show it in here, but not the number. Um, we'll just go into Duna SOI and figure it out. Looks good for now. Okay, we are doing a big old radio burn in order to get our periapsis closer to Duna. We are in Duna SOI, we can see Duna and Ike there. And we should probably build a base on Ike too. Well, if anything is actually stable on the surface, we'll find out. Okay, well, that should be... Well, that's definitely outside Duna's atmosphere. Heck, that's that would be outside Mars' atmosphere in real solar system, so... That's fine. Well, hold on. Let's check for any Ike interference. Oh, uh, no. That's not Ike. Okay, good. Nope, seems like we're clear of Ike. Okay. Boy, does Ike look close to Duna like this. Okay. We're fairly equatorial. That's not too bad. Okay, we are in orbit. Okay, well, we'll round it out at the periapsis and then try to get a landing in. We've got nine tons of propellant in the Spheratron. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we'll wait until we're just coming into the daylight side and start our landing. We'll de- we'll undock and deorbit. And maybe I should save the game. <laughs> maybe I should save the game right before we do that. Okay. Undock. Well, it switched to this pretty promptly. Were we really controlling from that at some point? I don't know. Okay, well... Yeah, well, these engines aren't activated. Let's try that. There we go. Alright, our mothership is behind us. And I'm tempted to flatten this out. Let me set Ike as a target. And the reason being, you know, we want to land other bases here later. Got 2,000 meters per second, it says. That seems fine. Okay. That seems to be what we planned. Uh, I don't really want to land in the midst of those sorts of craters, but it seems like our path here is mostly clear. So, okay. Let's find out. 
That we don't need anymore. Retrograde is good. Will we have a base on Duna? Let's find out. Will it hop the next time we look at it? That's That we won't find out just yet. Okay, coming in. And we are in the atmosphere. Manual. Oh gosh, maybe manually controlling it is not so good. Oh. Uh, okay, fine. Old retrograde, jeez. Okay, I don't like the speed, so... Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Um, I, I foresee a problem here. Uh-oh. I, I did not want to be spin-stabilized. Uh, is this enough deceleration? No, it's not. But we're spinning. Um, what do we do about this? I guess the nuclear engines were put on tilted somehow. That looks bumpy too. The problem is the nerves don't gimbal, right? That's probably the problem here. Ah, no! No! Oh! Um, oh, ah! <laughs> okay, I just, uh, uh, um... I don't know what just happened, actually. Well... Val can get out. You can see the previous module was there, that's why I was worried that maybe they wouldn't be able to get out. We've lost one nuke there, totally lost one nuke there. We've got two nukes, three pieces of the habitat. We're on a slope. We got how slopey Duna was. We might need to work on this whole base module thing later. This is clearly not ideal exactly, but I have no idea what just happened. I think they've made landing sort of sticky because of all the hoppiness that went on, maybe? Oh, she's yawning. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry, I was getting carried away with the explanation here. Mm, Val on Duna. Uh, well, let's just call it Duna Base 1. Uh, for some reason, we can't type numbers in the site name. Huh. Duna base A alpha then. Alpha. This was probably not how this was supposed to go. But then again, in Kerbal Space Program, what goes exactly how it was supposed to go? Alright, there we go. We'll have Val back into the habitat. And actually, uh, my intention was that they would eventually use the fuel tank as an extended habitat. It'd be like a wet workshop thing. So the whole thing, you know, it'd, it'd be emptied of the hydrogen. And they could use the whole thing as their little habitat area. Uh, yeah, well, this wasn't ideal. But uh, apparently... There was some tilt to the nuclear engines. They're glowing a little bit too. And yeah, I forgot that the nerves don't really do gimbling. Gimbling would have helped. So maybe next time we'll put RCS thrusters on and put our uh, mob propellant. Well, we already have a lot of mob propellant, so we just really need to put RCS thrusters on here to counteract the roll and try and figure out where the tilt for the roll was coming from. They must have been just a little bit they must have been just a little bit off or something. Tough to tell. Alright, well anyway, we have a Mar uh, not Mars, a Duna base of some sort. It was an interesting test. We have learned a few things. Like always use pad one. <laughs> I think. I think that actually made a difference. 
But with this, hold on. With this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.